How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to another Play Arts Kai review. Today, taking a look at the DC variant Batman Rogues Gallery Two-Face figure. This is a unique series where the designer, Hitoshi Kondo, and um, concept was done by Kelsey Britt. Take Batman and mash him up with one of his rogues, and this one is the Two-Face version. This was the first one to, re to be released in this line, and it looks really good. Um, I'm really digging the the design and um, kind of how they came up with the idea to do this. But before we take an in-depth look at the figure, let's take a look at the box. Like always, um, you got a nice picture here. Instead of having a picture of the actual figure, you get this nice art piece, which I do really like. You got the DC Batman logo over there. You got the Square Enix logo on the other side. It is your window box, so... Open up the box there, or the flap. You get to see where the figure is, and on this side you get a nice little write-up of why they're doing this, or what stuff about the series. And then you get a nice little kind of bio of how um, you had the Batman Two-Face merger. So, that's pretty cool. Um, the RP is kind of wraps around from the front to the side. On the back you do get to see pictures of the actual figure in different little poses and such. And then, um, don't forget underneath, you got the machine stamp for authenticity's sake. And let's bring the figure back in. And I will say this is a really, um, really nice looking figure. Um, the paint, the sculpt, I think is just spot on. Um, looking at it just from this side, the whole Batman look, um, you get the nice, you know, purples, blues, and blacks. Um, white emblem, which I think is, I, I guess, okay. Maybe I would rather have had maybe the gold or yellow. Uh, but other than that, you do have like the textured uh, bits here for his um, his costume, with the armor and all that. You do have some weathering over to there on the gauntlets, even to the cape. It's not too bad. On the other side, though, the Two-Face side, it is a very unique, kind of disturbing look, even though in the description it states, what if Two-Face just took one of Batman's battered bat suits and then just burned half of it to get down to the silver and red bits. But the red looks much, much like, um, you know, you just took the skin off of someone. And um, very, very cool. Um, just the amount of paint that's gone into it with the silver, the white, and um, all that. The bat, the, the the Batman utility belt looks good. You have the bat symbol on one side and then you got it all kind of burned and um, tattered on the one. And then even down to his um, feet and the cape on this side being all tattered and kind of trickles over onto the other side. I think it looks really good. All right. Let's get into some accessories, then we'll get into the actual um, articulation and such. So he does come with an alternate head. So you have the closed mouth that comes packaged on him. And then you have a nice kind of like screaming open mouth look. Zoom in there. That eye is creepy. As far as weapons are concerned, he does come with a battering. One side is the normal looking, and then the other is all disfigured to match the design. I think that's cool. And then you got some kind of weathering and cracks and such on the bat ring. Little details, I do like that. It does come with a pistol. Three different colors. You got the gold for the barrel, the slider. You got the gray, you got the um, darker kind of charcoal gray for the handle. It's not too bad. He does have a holster for the gun right there on the back. So that's nice. And then for his hands, he's got for his um, right hand, just this kind of relaxed, stylized hand. Some decent detail. Then he's got a 
gripping hand for the battering. And then he's got a pistol gripping hand, which comes with a gimmick where you can actually take off the back of the armor plate and um, you can either have it just normal, so it looks like that, or you can have it mimicking him throwing up the, his traditional, you know, coin that you have the heads or innocent. And then you can even switch it out to the guilty where it's got the scratched out head side. I thought that was a nice touch. And then for his left hand, he's got a kind of stylized open hand. It's a nice red. It's not translucent, it's opaque, but it still looks really good with just some of the black around it. And then you got the um, silver there wrapped around. And then he's got a um, hand that actually is holding the coin like he's about to flip it. The coin is actually molded in, but I thought that was really a nice touch. So you have that. Okay, let's get back to articulation now. All right, so articulation, again, typical player's kind of stuff, but they designed the arms um, a little different where they utilize the ball ratcheting hinge for the arms. So that's weird, but we'll get into that in a second. The head's on a double ball peg, or it's on a ball peg. So he can kind of look up, not too much because of the sculpt of the back of the helmet. Little bit of a gap, not too bad. Um, he can look down. The neck is on a ball peg also going into the uh, torso. So not too much of a gap, but he can look down, you know, obviously side to side and all that. As far as his torso is concerned, it's not on a ball peg. It's on a ratchet. And I've complained about certain Batman figures or certain characters that have capes that or that have too much weight on the back. They need that ratchet. He's not too heavy. Um, but with that ratchet, you don't have any give in the torso section. So he can't move side to side. You can't twist them or anything. He's got one click forward and kind of one click back. And then because of that, you open up this gap. And then, I mean, you could see exactly what I'm talking about there. There is the ratchet. He is a, one other like superficial gripe for me too. I'll just get over, get it over with right now is he's hollow. Um, you can really see through him at certain angles, um, but it's not like a deal breaker. All right. His arms, like I said, have the standard ball ratcheting that we're accustomed to with the elbow, wrist, and ankles. So you can kind of kind of see it right there. It goes in. Um, vertically so you can get that butterfly kind of mimicking the butterfly hinge this is a soft plastic so you can get his arm around but kind of it's weird to manipulate it to rotate around because it's going at an angle but i guess it's more fluent um realistic i guess you could say um you can rotate it on that hinge um and all that it goes up about that far. This side's nicer just because it's more tattered. Uh, this side's a little more hindered because of the cape, but you still have nice range of motion. Does have a uh, bicep swivel. Doesn't break the sculpt up too much. Um, so that's, that's nice, at least on that side. This side, same thing. Again, like I said, ball ratcheting hinge for the elbow. So you get a nice 90 degrees. You can rotate it at the top and at the base. Same thing with the wrist. The waist section is, is on a ball joint, so you can move side to side, rotate it, all that type of stuff. This is a floating piece. He's got two floating pieces, which is odd. So this skirt with the, uh, the utility belt and then along with his, his undies, his fundy undies here, um, can move around also. And 
you can see in there that it is a ball joint connected up to the torso. You can rotate his arm or his hip joints can go forward. Not too bad. You can go back pretty good. Um, and then out. Then you do have a thigh cut, which unfortunately does break up the sculpt since you can see that it's lined up everywhere. So kind of a little bit of a fail of not, but again, superficial, I guess. Um, double um, jointed knee, very stiff, but you can get them into some nice poses. And you got this nice little, you know, kneecap for the figure um, to hide away that ugly ass joint. Um, but it works. And again, you got the ratcheting ball hinge here. So go up that far, go down that far. You can rotate it around to get the ankle rocker, and then he's got a toe hinge, which is not bad. I mean, it's, it actually looks decent. So um, as far as his cape, I do like the fact that they went to the older style where they are on a ratcheting ball hinge, as you can see there. It's funny that they use red and black there. Um, but it goes into the body. So it's, um, I believe the Joker, maybe it's Mr. Freeze. They went to the newer style where it's a block of plastic connected to the, the back. And then the cape plugs into that block of plastic, which I absolutely hate. So it sticks it out a little bit more. But um, you can rotate it around. You can flip it up. It is a little heavy. Um, again, it's on a that peg, so you can take it off if you want, but it's easy to just pop back on and manipulate. And so you can twist it around. So not bad. Um, I do wish that it had actually had maybe a, maybe a hinge right here, like we got with the Batman Origins uh, Batman, or maybe some, you know, maybe a ball hinge here or there just to kind of make this go out a little bit more. Um, I could probably manipulate this with just some, you know, hot air or, you know, hot water or something. But he does come packaged with it kind of wrapped around. But other than that, it's a nice figure. I do like it. Um, I do recommend it if you are a Batman fan and you like unique looking Batmans. This isn't for everyone. I get that. It's, a, it's part of their variant line. So it's their take on it. And I think it's a really cool idea. And I do like, um, let's see, I forgot to throw in like the Joker here, just for his comparison. I do, um, I do think they look really good. They have a lot of pop on the shelf. It's a nice like attention getter when you have people coming over and like, oh wow, that's a cool looking Batman. Um, or what the hell happened to that Batman? Um, he does stand, um, I think he was a little over. Are you gonna stand for me? No, you're not. Okay. Let me get my tape measure out. He is close to 10 inches to the top of the normal bat ear. I'm a little bit taller with the uh, Two-Face. So he fits in scale with your um, newer release Play Arts Kai's Marvel variants. Um, um, you know, BVS, all that type of stuff. So, um, but yep. Good figure. Um, he is a little pricey, so be aware of that. The normal retail for this guy is two hundred bucks. Um, the price is subjective. If you know, I I like him, but I can't recommend him at that price point. So I'll leave it at that. So that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. I really do appreciate it. If you like the video, hit that like button. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. If you like, also. Um, don't forget Plastic Fanatics, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time right here. And um, I really do appreciate you guys watching. Stay tuned for more, and I will talk to everyone later.